Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, if you're new to the channel, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you and I hope you had a great Easter last uh, week. Uh, I did take last week off uh, from recording videos, uh, well, recording a video anyway, um, and uh, this week I'm back, so I um, hope you all had a great Easter. Anyways, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow trading colleagues as it helps support the channel, so definitely press that like and subscribe button. Anyways, uh, our Trading 180 process um, is to apply fundamental analysis to establish directional bias and then apply technical analysis, supply and demand strategies to time trade entries, risk management, and establish profit targets. So we use the best of both. This isn't one versus the other, not a polarizing debate. We use uh, fundamentals and technical analysis to uh, establish the best trades um, uh, and trade ideas and uh, opportunities. So let's get into the um, the week ahead and the economic calendar. And um, this week there is a few newsworthy um, news events, I should say, uh, economic news events uh, to be um, uh to be aware of, I guess. So uh, Wednesday, uh, I would say the inflation report, a lot of the first quarter data um, is coming out now, which is gonna be very important um, because it sets the tone really for the next uh, few months as to what you know central bank policy will be. Um, so uh, inflation rate for Australia, you've also got the Bank of Japan interest rate decision as well on, um, on, on Thursday, and we'll go into into that as well. You've got GDP growth rate for the first quarter for the US, um, and uh, yeah, so let's see what happens uh, there. The actual well, the forecast is actually 1.1%, um, which, uh, yes, is, is a bit of a pullback, but it's not drastic. If it comes in around that, I mean, the markets would have been pricing that in anyway, so I don't think there'll be any drastic uh, moves when it comes to uh, um, you know the uh, the actual data itself um, Friday we have is it's going to be a really busy day for Europe matter of fact uh, GDP growth rate um, as well as inflation yeah I mean, we've also got personal income personal spending but the uh, GDP growth rate for the for Europe is going to be definitely keenly watched because again that will set the tone for what the central bank is looking uh, to do with monetary policy and we'll get into you know that in a bit more detail as we go um, into the charts and some in-depth fundamental analysis so getting into now um, the charts uh, and accompanying fundamental analysis, we start off as we always do on the dollar index, the DXY, and that is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, major um, currencies like the euro, the yen, and the pound. And uh, starting off with uh, fresh blank charts uh, to help you draw your demand or supply zones, depending on which way you want to trade based off of really um, uh, the fundamentals. So there's definitely a demand zone there, and then we do have another demand zone here. So we don't necessarily trade the uh, the dollar index. We're just looking at. In fact, I'm on the wrong um, time frame. Sorry about that. I was on the 12 hour. This is where we are when it comes to uh, demand zone. Yep. So that's where we are. And then let's uh, scroll down a little bit. So we've got one there. Yeah, zoom out a little bit. That's where we are. Right. Um, so. Uh, from this perspective, uh, the dollar index is just a measure of strength, as I've said before, and uh, don't we don't necessarily trade the dollar um, index? We just uh, use this as you know potential confluence to see you know dollar strength, um, and if prices generally come down into a demand zone, um, and then they come down into a nice demand zone or supply zone, depending on which way you're buying or selling on one of the uh, crosses, then that just adds uh, some confluence, right? So from that perspective, um, you know, we're just looking at the technicals for confluence. But uh, from a fundamental perspective, the uh, the Fed uh, 
Jerome Powell hardens hawkish pivot towards half a point Fed rate hikes and notes many officials saw need for one or more half point moves and cites front end loading of policy tightening to cool the economy. So just reading the, uh, the first um, paragraph or so. So Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell outlined his most aggressive approach to taming inflation to date. Uh, potentially endorsing two or more half point, uh, half percentage point in interest rate increases while describing the labour market as overheated. So um, in order to combat inflation, central banks have to hike rates. So um, inflation in the uh, US is literally, I think it's something like 8.5% or something like that. You've got a CPI. So uh, they are very, very hawkish um, in um, in their stance when it comes to um, hiking rates. Um, so with that being said, that generally is positive for a currency. And it has been, uh, we've been saying this for, you know, over a year now is literally just my bias has been uh, to buy uh, the dollar. You can check the facts on uh, all my previous videos for the year. If you go to my weekly videos, I've been saying, not financial advice, of course, but I've been saying I've been buying the dollar, buying the dollar on pullbacks. So we get the direction right. We can predict, you know, the long term trends uh, with fundamentals and um, and also uh, just looking at the technicals for, for our entries. Right. So um, for me, I think any pullbacks I never like to buy expensive areas um, looking for definite pullbacks into, you know, into zones to look for long trades. There will be a, you know, a, a situation where the dollar will pull back uh, quite deeply. And there's going to be a lot more profit taking because it's you know buy the room and sell the fact right you you want to make the money before they start to hike rates and then on the day that they hike rates i'm not saying that you should sell but um most of the money would have been made right um so uh really the money's being made way before the event actually happens so um any pullbacks i think for the for the dollar into um, lower into these zones a great confluence is to buy um, uh, on the uh, dollar yen, for example, or dollar Swiss, if you're looking to buy uh, those currencies. Now, looking at the dollar yen, if just keeps making higher highs, right? Higher highs. Uh, where are we? Where's my uh, uh, tool? Here we go. Right, just been literally, it's probably moved what a thousand over a thousand pips since uh, since March. Right, we can see that. Um, something like maybe 12-13% since uh, the beginning of March it's moved yeah about 1,476 uh, uh, pips I guess you can call it pips but in percentage terms it's moved 12 about 12% 12 which is uh, a massive move and um, on our fundamental analysis uh, spreadsheet, we've got um, the dollar yen as a strength divergence of seven, which is the biggest divergence you can get. One representing typical strength and eight representing typical weakness, although that is not always the case. But um, on our spreadsheet, we've had uh, that reading for um, a long time now and uh, pretty much just understanding that the base currency, which is the dollar, uh, being ranked number one is the uh, is typically the one to buy. Although there are times where you can look for uh, to buy, actually sell number one because not all currencies are strong at all times. But um, but yeah, it's been one versus eight for a while um, based off of uh, you know the data that we use uh, to determine currency strength. And uh, looking at the Bank of Japan uh, for this week, uh, the Bank of Japan expected to hold firm even as economists flag 130 yen levels. So some 45% uh, of analysts now see some policy action by year end and around 84% see inflation hitting 2% at some point this year. And the Bank of Japan is widely expected to stand pat next week. So stand, not, not make any dis major decisions and hold uh, next week, even as speculation grows that it might adjust policy before the end of the year to account for the weakening yen with economists flagging the 130 mark against the dollar as a key level. So um, the, the, um, the the Bank of Japan, um, unfortunately, the 130 is just, just above where we are now. Um, the, the yen has been weakening, which is always desired by a central bank in, in certain environments, but it's devalued, you know, too quickly, which has become a bit of a problem 
for the uh, the Bank of Japan. So there is a um, there are rumours that the Bank of Japan could start to intervene um, in and around this area as far as you know policy and um, central bank currency interventions to try to stop. The, uh, the yen depreciating as fast as it has, which could support a, uh, a potential short trade. Although um, I'm personally, I am uh, long on this currency pair. So looking for a pullback, the next pullback is, you know, about 800 pips away, which is crazy, but um, it could obviously, uh, price could um, uh, uh, create a demand, right? So to create demand, uh, you probably going to see some sort of pullback and then a move higher where you've got proof of value the price proves that it's you know it's a bargain at certain areas and then wait for a pullback into that area there so um that's really the best uh play that i would say at the moment got to be a bit patient to try and enter on this in the way that i trade um not looking to you know uh, force any type of trades just follow the process um, so waiting for a bit of a pullback, which I think is probably due at some point. Um, and then um, once prices pull back and prove where uh, there is uh, some sort of demand um, and value, um, then I will look for uh, buying opportunities. If you do want to get short on the uh, dollar yen again, prices haven't proved that there is supply uh, or strong supply here again price would have to you know come down really for um and create a supply zone as i said in previous weeks uh, videos a lot of traders probably would have been trying to get short somewhere around here thinking that you know this historical level was going to be a zone where um you know to potentially get short and uh, as i've said uh, many times before um you know a, a level in 2015 what has that got to do with um, you know where we are uh, potentially right now in the fundamentals because fundamentals is what drives price and not the other way around so um, you know we we all knew if you understand uh, fundamental analysis that um, the, the yen was weak so the path of this resistance would have been to the upside and um, pretty much what's happened a whole load of traders who were looking at um, potentially uh, shorting that based off the technical levels have literally just had their you know stops run so um, safest thing to do is to just look for again the path of these resistance the divergences and um, see what happens there and see how it plays out so that's really where we are with the dollar yen uh, dollar Swiss <clears throat> uh, again if you watch my videos a couple of weeks ago I've been long on this uh, currency with long bias just didn't get an entry down here unfortunately was waiting for that and waiting for some pullbacks which unfortunately did not happen right when you get a strong trend Unfortunately, you can't get into every single uh, major uh, trend or, or pullback, depending on obviously your strategy. But um, as long as we get the direction correct, which is basically what I do on a consistent basis. So uh, over the medium to long term anyway. Short term, nobody knows, right? It's random, price is more random and driven by uh, liquidity. But I do think that this area here now has become a decent area to look for potential buy although it is you know erring on the side of uh, the expensive but if you are you know really in a hurry to get into this uh, trade and you really are you know wanting to get into that a dollar buy swiss trade then that zone in in around this uh, 9 uh, 0 0.95 to 0 0.946 area is decent for a long trade so then it's just a case of going down into you know lower time frames and seeing <clears throat> uh what the uh, uh any supportive evidence but um yeah that's where where i am if you are looking to short the uh the uh, dollar swiss i can't see really any key i mean there are always going to be supply zones right there's going to be a supply zone here but again question becomes why there right why would you want to uh, short there yes there is a supply zone but um, you know what drove prices down in 2020 and what made the uh, dollar weaker than the uh, Swiss franc is it going to be the same thing that's going to make the dollar you know weaker hit um, you know I get, I get it there's probably some sort of profit taking etc but um, for me it's just really waiting for pullbacks into into these types of zones um, but if you are looking at short trades, then, you know, be my guest, right? Um, uh, the dollar cat, dollar cat, um, again, I'm not, not really a pair that I'm interested in trading. 
uh, there was a pullback into that demand zone right there. If you were looking to buy the dollar, uh, looking to sell the dollar, then you've got an area right above you of supply that looks quite decent for a uh, sell trade, or does it? Mm. Mm. No, I think probably that the highest zone that level has been touched several times. Although it's, a, it's an area here, I think for me, if I was looking to, if I was looking to trade this, it would be somewhere up at the highs, probably just above the highs. But if you are thinking that the uh, Canadian dollar is a bargain and you want to get short on here, then that's going to be your entry. If you're looking at long trades, in fact, we do have um, demand. I think demand's probably going to cover this wide zone here, and if. Generally, typically, if, if you do get a really wide zone of demand like this, the best thing to do, one of the things you can do is just break down um, break down the level. So just find areas of support and resistance, horizontal um, support and resistance within the area, and then um, even go on the daily and then go down into the uh, intradays, like maybe the four hour, for example, and just see you know a bit more detail where there's a bit more accuracy so you can see all right then well within that demand zone we've got intraday support and then just look for uh, trades in and around those zones so you know don't no need to get flustered no need to think that you know um uh, demand doesn't work because it's proven right it's proven that there is definitely demand in and around these zones right just because it doesn't look the way that you think it should look and it's not pretty and etc doesn't mean that this, this doesn't represent an area of demand right it it definitely is the, uh, the strongest areas of demand generally um, should be at the, the the lows of the move right but again nobody knows where exactly prices may turn around on a pullback so it could turn around here here you know or somewhere down at these lows but the point is is that even within those areas there are structures to potentially look to buy if you are a buyer, of course, of the US dollar against the uh, Canadian dollar. So um, that's your choices, but for me, not really um, a pair that I'm interested in. You've got two central banks competing and hiking rates, similar to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, right now, you've got, I'm gonna draw demands from here, and then you've got another demand zone here, and you've got some areas of supply, one there, and just one above, I'll draw those two. And that is supply. Change that to supply. Um, again, fundamentally, two strong uh, currencies. Um, give it to the US. The US is, you know, ahead of the um, the New Zealand, not by much. Uh, but um, yeah, I think uh, if you are looking to buy the New Zealand dollar, I think probably the best area would be to look to buy probably at these lows, these uh, zero point six five area lows for a potential buy um, if you're looking for a sell trade up at these areas here if you're understanding that the uh, the dollar is the uh, the stronger out of the two again you've got two central banks that are hiking rates um, so for me uh, not really a pair that I'm interested in trading uh, looking at the pound dollar and the pound dollar is something that actually I am interested in trading and I've been saying again um, that you know the path of least resistance is to the downside um, if you check the uh, the records in my previous weeks I've been saying that the pound dollar to the downside and you can see what's been happening and uh, really the, the one of the reasons or the main reason in fact for that is that um, I believe that the not the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, um, and, and the UK economy is going into stagflation. Um, the 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 UK economy is um, is uh, not doing you know so well. So the pound hits the lowest since lockdown on signs UK recovery slows. Right. So three reports indicate cost of living crisis is hitting growth, and pound drops to lowest since the COVID lockdown in November 2020. So the pound hit the lowest. Uh, uh, since November 2020 when the UK was in a coronavirus lockdown as three uh, separate reports suggested economic recovery is faltering the S&P global PMI for both services and the whole economy fell into a three month low in April while consumer confidence sank to its lowest since the recession of 2008 and retail sales fell sh more sharply than expected in March so all that um, all those data points um, kind of point to slowing um, GDP 
which uh, and when you have rising inflation and slowing GDP, that is what's known as stagflation. So uh, as I've been saying uh, for a few, uh, about a month or two now, um, that uh, uh, I was looking for, you know, uh, shorts on the pound, I changed my mind on buying the pound. Um, in fact, I think probably all this area here, so I've got a wide zone of, uh, of supply. And again, unfortunately, it doesn't look pretty, but that's just the way it is. You can either draw, you know, loads of those zones, you can either draw loads of zones like that, right? or you can just draw it as one zone uh, like that. And then you'd have probably one around here. Right, but what's the point in doing that? Just have them as all in one zone. Um, so, with that being said, again, where in that zone would you look to, you know, look for uh, sell trades? Again, you'd probably look for anywhere where you've got one of the ways you can do it is horizontal support and resistance, both from a um, a, uh, a higher time frame perspective or an intraday. I do like this one thirty though. In that 130 zone and just below that is, is very nice for a potential uh, sell trade this now becomes decent as well um, just the underside of that zone so if prices do come back uh, yeah and then that is decent as well I do like that um, it's pretty good the 130s are probably going to be the first area to look for potential sell trades um, and again uh, it's a different contrast right to what you're seeing from from the uh, uh, reports out of the UK and reports out of the uh, the US. So for me, the bias is to the downside. If you are looking to buy the pound for whatever reason, and there are reasons to buy the pound, the Bank of England are still looking to high rates. But um, I don't know whether again a, a demand zone back in 2020 is going to um, you know be uh, sufficient technically obviously it's there and you know that there was definitely demand at that point in time but um, but is that going to be enough uh, as, as to, to determine whether this is a bargain for the pound um, so me personally just looking for uh, uh, pullbacks into you know supply zones to continue to short the pound um, if I can get uh, an entry um, Moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar um, again, prices have been going down as we predicted by the fundamentals. And again, the Europe though is 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 similar, I think, to the uh, to the UK, but I think they're probably a bit more worse off. Um, and the, really, the reason is is because um, although they are uh, jawboning or, or what is known as moral suasioning the um, the euro they want um, an, a more expensive euro to kind of stop the depreciation or devaluation of the euro which obviously um, produces inflation and right and causes rising inflation um, they are looking to high rates but again just like the UK um, the, the the economy isn't doing well right and especially because geographically where they are in relation to the uh, russia um, ukraine conflict but um it doesn't stop the uh, the central bankers from trying to convince the market that they are looking to hike rates and appreciate the euro so the ecb rate at zero or more by a year end a no-brainer winch says so war would have to cause very big shock to change policy path. Belgian official says he's ready to consider July rate hike. And so the European Central Bank could lift policy rates above zero before the end of the year unless the Eurozone economy suffers a severe shock um, and it might even have to deploy restrictive policy to get surging prices under control. Governing Council member Pierre Winch said says um, and again, so the rumors have started that the you know the, the euro might start start to high rates, and um, what the central bank is actually attempting to do again is try to convince the market to that the euro dollar should really go higher and the euro should appreciate in value. But um, understanding you know the uh, the the economics behind it, I think it's it's just all talk and. Um, and so again, for me, part of this resistance is still to the downside. Doesn't mean that prices can't go higher in the short term, but if it does, if prices you know do go higher, then for me, it's you know more 
uh, short trade, short trading opportunities in and around that zone there, or if prices you know go through that supply zone, um, and the market doesn't think that the the, uh, the dollar is a bargain down here, then this will going to be the next zone uh, for me to look for any short trades. But again, for me, it's got, it's you know it's, it's still to the short side. So, but if you are looking at long trades, if you are looking at long trades. Um, uh, there is a little bit of a zone here, not a strong zone, of course, but you can draw that. Um, but I, you know, it's not something. There's definitely demand there, but not a strong area of of daily demand anyway um, that I would look to trade. But where we are now could be a decent buying opportunity, especially um, as again we get closer to um, uh, Friday. Which is going to be really kind of the uh, the major trading day um, for the euro, and uh, if if the GDP and inflation comes out um, as expected, then that could be um, a um, uh, well better than expected, I should say, and that that could be obviously a. Um, uh, a, a buying opportunity for the euro. Um, so. Next on the uh, the list is going to be Aussie dollar, right? Aussie dollar again, not really a currency I'm looking to trade, but the um, the dollar, US dollar, is ahead of the uh, the Australian dollar monetary policy wise. Um, you had a nice run up over the past uh, few you know weeks and months, but as um, the Federal Reserve now start to um, hike up their rhetoric on uh, hiking rates. You're seeing pretty much, you know, a, a bit of a pullback, which was due. Again, if you want to be a buyer, the Australian dollar now is actually a decent time. If you think the do Australian dollar is cheap against the US dollar, if you think the US dollar is is um, you know still the one to look to buy, then you're looking for a uh, sell trade on a retracement back up into these uh, 74, 73, 76 areas. But again, nothing really much to say about uh, the uh, the Australian dollar, US dollar. Aussie yen, um, again, waiting for a pullback on this. I think uh, this area down here, the 91 round number, should be decent for a potential buy. You've also got smaller demand zones in and around that area, but I do think that this, uh, uh, this the currency pair there is you're due for a massive pullback right you, you, you can't have that move all the way up without having at least a deeper pullback and i do think that the 91 area is going to be a decent for a uh, for a potential buy um and if not then again either one of two things are going to happen prices will try to hit this or prices will create a demand zone somewhere Within this uh, between 91 and 86 area, and then a pullback into that zone is where you want to be a, a buyer if you're looking to buy the Australian uh, dollar for the Japanese yen. If you're trying to buy maybe their uh, the fact that they might intervene and, and want to um, stop prices going any higher, then this is going to be a decent zone for a uh, for a short trade if you're looking to buy the yen. Um, but again, my for me, I think the path of this resistance is still to the upside, but uh, let's see what happens. And finally, gold and gold has pulled back a bit. So anyone who's missed out on this uh, on this gold trade to the upside um, now has an opportunity to look for some buys. Uh, there are some demand zones in and around here. Um, I do think fresher areas of demand are uh, are best. I do think that's it's decent here to be fair for a potential long trade buying the buying gold really based off of obviously risk sentiment um, uh, you know inflation worries if inflation doesn't come down then again I think gold is definitely um, a buy it's a buy anyway I think so it's more of a buy than it is a sell um, even though you know the, the dollar the US dollar is um, you know the stronger uh, one of the strongest currencies because gold and, and the dollar tend to work inversely but i think i think there is going to be um uh in, in in the near future within the next maybe a few months or so where the dollar may start to pull back 
um, and, and weaken a lot of uh, banks have uh, predicted it in maybe the third quarter so this could be a nice buying opportunity on pullbacks down into any of these zones for a, a decent buy and again if you're looking at gold and thinking well where to buy where to sell um, and again it's not financial advice really you want to look for probably fresher areas of demand um, so I think in fact I would the bargain would be somewhere around the 1880s I think that'd be, that'd be quite nice and even better would be the 1860s for a decent buy but of course nobody knows where the turning point is exactly so it's just a case of understanding um, you know if you want to buy here that's fine you know what I mean if you if, if your bias is to the upside if you've got a valid setup then see where it takes you right but I think uh, the better zones are you know further down uh, cheaper zones anyways uh, for gold anyways guys that's it for this week again don't forget to like subscribe and share um, again with your uh, with your fellow trading colleagues and um, yeah I'll see you guys uh, in the next video take care have a great trading week